Hey, welcome to the Android Police Podcast. Uh, I am Ryan Whitwam. I'm Cody Toombs. And I'm Corbin Davenport. And there is a box floating in front of all of our faces if you're watching the video right now because we've had technical issues and this is the best we can do. Um, yes. It's going to be switched pretty... between three different video chat platforms in the past 30 minutes. We, uh, this is, <laughs> this is yeah. as good as it's going to get, guys. Ironic when Hangouts is as good as it gets. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the one that, okay, now there are, uh, there's, there, is that a subtitle at the bottom of the video? I added that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It, it's my way of erasing a middle finger to Google over this. Okay. Well, I mean, if the, if the video chat thing that we wanted to use was actually functional, we wouldn't even have to like worry about this, but our setup is based on that now. So that's broken. So now everything else doesn't work because of the way yes. we stream now. It's just a mess. Um, but this is not important. If you're just listening to the audio, you don't care if there's a, a Hangouts error box in front of our faces. Uh, so we're going to talk about Android Q, um, which doesn't have a name. There is no dessert name. There will be no more dessert names going forward. It's just Android 10. I'm so heartbroken. I mean, I would be more heartbroken if Google wasn't totally phoning in all of the the names lately. Like you could tell for the last couple of years, Google didn't want to be doing this, but they felt like they had to because it was tradition or whatever. And like like all of the statues for the last three years, I guess, have, have been boring and and you know kind of sad. And the names haven't been very good. And you know now, so but now you know Pi will be the last named Android release. There's just going to be numbers now. Yeah, and they 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 said a couple of different reasons for why they're not using names, but I, I you know, um, like maybe people around the world wouldn't know what certain types of food is. I, I think it's just they don't want to <laughs> have to yeah, keep yeah. doing this. Yeah, That's, they just they they just don't. Yeah, they, they don't, don't they don't anymore. they don't want to find something that starts with Q, and the number ten is a nice like you know transition point for them to move to something else. So it stinks. Um, but they did, they did, uh, freshen up the Android brand a little bit. They released a new video and a blog post that shows how the logo is now very slightly different. Um, so instead of like, uh, Android in green text it's now Android in black text with slightly different font. And now they put the little bug droid head next to the Android logo. Yeah, just they, as they decapitated the bug droid. Yeah. The body's gone. They don't know where the, where they buried the body. Um, and also, he's a slightly different shade of green now. He's not as white. He's a little bit more, a little like bit more green. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like, like the new color. It's like winter green. Yeah, and of course, in in typical uh, Silicon Valley company fashion, they spent way too long talking about the design process of the new uh, logo and branding <laughs> when it's just they tweak the lines a little bit. But it's nice. I like it. I still yeah, wish I mean, there was a dessert. I mean, I'm happy that they at least kept the bug droid in some fashion. I, I mean, I could have easily seen Google just deciding they didn't want to have anything yeah. even mildly playful involved with the Android brand anymore. But they, they just like changed the name from Android to something like extremely boring. I don't know. I think they had to keep something. They, they can't. Well, they could, but they're probably not going to kill the Android name. It's a little too. Well, I think it would it's too very, late in the game for that. It would be a very bad idea to do that. But Google has a lot of bad ideas. And true enough. <laughs> but yeah, they had they had to keep some element of the old branding. Not not a lot, but they had to keep at least Android as a as a shape and design. But yeah, they're it, the killing of the statues, the killing of the names and everything else. It's it feels just a little over corporate. Well, they're they're still gonna have a statue. It's gonna be a giant number ten. <laughs> yeah, that's not a that's not a statue. They should get I mean, um they should get uh who is the Dracula on Sesame Street? They should get him to dedicate the statue. The count. The, the count. Yeah, yes. the count Dracula. Yes. No, no, just the count. Count. Okay. Yeah. He'll dedicate. Corbin, did you were you ever actually a child? Okay, <laughs> I haven't watched Sesame Street in like fifteen years. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. one that makes me sad that it's only fifteen years. Two, how do you how would you not remember the count? I'm sorry. You should be. All right, all right. No, let's I, just move I, on before I get well, more sad about how old I am. I will. Uh, I, I will say, I'm glad they're at least keeping the number 
because it seems like I, I really hope they don't go down the Windows 10 route where there's like four different names for each release and the like one number doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> like how you have like one update, but they've rolled it out three different times because of bugs. So there's a different build number on top of that. And then I they mean, have. I feel like we already have that though, don't we? Like we have, we have you know, Android 9 Pi right now, but there are a bunch of different builds. The build number changes every time there's an update. I yeah. think Corbin's referring to like the creator well, like, or I'm, whatever I'm, it was called. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm um, just saying like the the security fixes, like usually they don't add a, any noticeable features. Like I know there's been exceptions with like the pixels, but for the yeah, most I mean, part, all Android I, 9 Pis are equal. I don't, I don't see Google doing like 10.1. I feel like they're going to stick like yeah. to to hold numbers now that it's that's the name of the of the release. So yeah, I am I I do hope yeah that they just stick with the numbers and they don't do kind of like what Apple does where they well not even beyond Apple where they just say oh the new Android update is coming this fall and they just have like an internal build number that they refer to it but they don't mention that anywhere. Hope it doesn't go that far, but yeah, at least it's it's not complicated anymore. It's just a number ten. I miss the desserts though. I'm I I don't know. I feel like it maybe the version number and naming are getting conflated here. It's it, it's it can be Android 10 and it's just Android 10. It's it, you know, that's a name. It's a brand or not brand, but uh it's just how they're naming it. And then uh there will always be version numbers because it would be chaos if there weren't some kind of version numbers. So, yeah. you know, they they can have a 10.1, it's still Android 10. Like, yeah, that's not breaking anything. The The world will not implode over this. And outside of like a little bit of the community getting angry when Samsung doesn't ship 10.1 because, you know, they won't. Uh, I don't think it really matters. Like the community will all the, the enthusiasts and the community, the developers are always going to really care about the specifics and the internals. And the rest of the world is just they're still just going to a store, picking out the the phone that looks nice and hopefully it comes with uh the latest version of android which doesn't have a dessert now uh what what they did announce is that now they're switching to chrome's release schedule so android 11 is coming next month <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get a new version of android every month for the future i'm kidding hopefully that doesn't happen i can't keep track of any more versions <laughs> I don't know at this at this point. At, I, the thing is, I honestly still get confused because I try to remember the API numbers and I've like long yeah, since been unable to remember those because yeah, that's I've, where a lot of other stuff gets really complicated. Yeah, I have to Google those every time. Yep, that's I, the, the API number, I think, is the, the best actual measure of how many Android releases there have been. Yeah. yeah. What is it? They're in the 27, 20, right? I think. 27. Yeah, coming up on 30. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, so really, this is like Android 30 or something. This is 10 yeah. nonsense. Because for a long time, Google was was like making like point releases, major releases. So, you know, they've, they've covered Next. a lot of things between. Okay, I, really quick, I looked this up. Uh, Android Q will be API 29. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So next, Cody, you're going to tell me that Windows 10 wasn't really the 10th release of Windows. <laughs> I never said anything about that. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay. And there was definitely a Note 6. That phone existed. <laughs> <laughs> and there yeah. was. And, and a Windows 9. And yeah. A, yeah. And an Xbox uh, 2 through 359. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, they also and they also 9. had an Android A and B. Oh, were those? 1.0 1 and 1 1.1. Oh. Yeah, okay. they never actually had A and B code names or anything. Yeah, no, was... yeah. Cupcake was the first one that they named. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're... You're right, I remember that now. Good times. Yeah, weird, weird trivia. <laughs> but you, you've been subscribed to Android trivia facts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, sad. It's sad to see that Google has lost all of their whimsy and fun. Yeah. No fun. This allowed. is just where we're at. No fun allowed. But thank you, Skettlefield, for subscribing on Twitch with. An eight-month streak. Oh my goodness! The rest of you need to step it up. I'm just kidding. We'll take any any subs, any whatever subs you've got. 
Not yeah. sub sandwiches, though. Speaking speaking of subs and uh, you know generally shilling and and all of that nonsense, uh, Corbin, why don't you why don't why, why don't you handle this one? Okay, so if you enjoy this show, even though it does have a giant white box in the middle that we can't fix, if you still enjoy it and you want to support it for some reason, it would be super appreciated if you would subscribe to us at twitch.tv slash Android Police. If you're an Amazon Prime member, uh, Amazon actually gives you one free Twitch sub every month that you can give to whoever you want. So you can support us without actually spending your own money. And it does still help us, not just fake Amazon money. Um, you just have to connect your Amazon account to your Twitch account. And we have the instructions for that below this video if you're watching live or in the show notes if you're listening to the audio version. And once you do that, you can subscribe just by clicking the subscribe button on our channel page. And once you do that, you get the super awesome Rhine emoji. That's a lot of fun to use. Um, and you also get, as just a little extra bonus, you get extra entry methods and all the giveaways that we do. There's a little box for um, people who subscribe on Twitch and they get like five or six points in every giveaway. And actually right now we're giving away a Google Pixel 3a XL. That's actually a really nice phone. I have one. It's very nice um, in a giveaway with a video editing software. So uh, I'll throw the link to that in the uh, chat and the, um, or you can just find it on our site under the giveaways. But yeah, so that's something else you can get by subscribing to us. And uh, also remember that if you subscribe with the Prime option, they expire after a month. So you have to just go back to Twitch and click the button again. And uh, that's it. Okay. So now yeah. that we now that we've we've done we've done the unpleasant shilling, uh, we can well, go back I'll, to talking about we to, about it. We have to show also that scary Uncle Devin subscribed on Twitch. Thank you, oh, thank you, Uncle Devin. Um, so we're gonna keep talking about Android Ten. Apparently, uh, Nokia was happy to hop on the Android Ten bandwagon as soon as possible and remind everybody that it's gonna update its phones, which should not come as a surprise because most of its phones are Android One. So uh, let's see the first the first round of updates later this year will be the 7.1, 8.1, and 9 Pure View. So that's pretty fast. Yes, that is fast, Ryan. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was drinking water. Um, yeah, no, it's nice to see um, HMD Global, the company that makes these phones. It's nice to see them put out a schedule before Android Ten's even released. That means yeah. they they care even a little bit. Um, meanwhile, Motorola in three months will be like, okay, we might update the Moto Z phone, and that's all you get. Yeah, you know. I Maybe like middle late next year they'll update like the Brazilian variant. Yeah, and just, yeah, just that one. Yeah, um, the Brazilian so Moto G. Nokia. I mean, like we have they have this graphic that they they sent out. It's you know it's very fancy. It lists pretty much every phone they've made in the last two years, three years maybe. Like it's it, they've got the the Nokia two point one, the Nokia eight Sirocco, the five point one plus, all the, all kinds of phones. So. Odds are, if you have an even kind of newish Nokia phone, you'll get Android 10 probably a lot faster than somebody who just spent a thousand dollars on a Note 10. <laughs> yeah, Seems I, I haven't, I haven't looked to see what phones are missing from this list. I know the only one I think to miss out on Pi was the Nokia 2, like the original one, I think, something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, they're. Again, they're usually very good with updating their phones. They were a little bit slow on Pi, but mostly just for like the really budget models because they were last on the list. But yeah, it's nice to see. It's nice to see an uh, Android OEM besides Google care about shipping updates in a timely manner. And OnePlus, OnePlus will probably beat almost everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so good All job, right. Nokia. Oh, um, also really quick, uh, big thanks to uh, Uncle Devin for the bits. Tons and tons of bits. Man, oh, he's yeah. dropping the bits. I don't really right understand now. how Twitch works, but I, th I think that's a good thing. <laughs> it's This is like the equivalent of, of throwing pennies at someone. This is what he's doing. He's it doesn't throwing actually a, seem very nice. Yeah, he's except this is enough pennies to actually hurt if they hit you. Yeah, well, he's like, he's like chucking nickels at us is what's happening right now. 
Yeah, they're, I, see. they're I, I promote that to quarters. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Solid, right. solid quarter hits. I definitely got hurt from all the quarters <laughs> he's throwing at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's let's talk uh, briefly about how bad Google is at branding. Uh, because they're really bad. Because there's going to be a new Home Mini, but it's not going to be called a Home Mini. It's probably going to be called a Nest Mini, which makes sense, kind of, maybe. Uh, at this point, I'm just assuming that they probably started this project and haven't renamed it internally. Who knows? Maybe maybe it will be Nest Mini on the box. Maybe they don't know, but... I mean... If if they if they stick with their established very bad branding, it would be a Google <laughs> Nest Mini, right? I believe so. Google, uh, the new Google Nest Mini XL. I feel like I feel like the Google Home branding was good. You know, it it was a it was a, a name that made sense with Google's like app support. Like you used the Home app to set these things up and control them, and it was like it was a brand that you could tell people, and you know there were products you could just. You could say, I want a Google Home, and there were like three different Google Homes. And now it's like, okay, well, so there, there are some Google Homes, but like there, there are also like Nest devices, right? There are Nest cameras, Nest thermosets. Then there are Google Nest speakers, yeah. Google Nest hubs, and it's just such a mess. Like, I don't, I mean, obviously we don't know everything yet, but what, I don't know what feature this is going to have that makes it fit in any way with nest or home security or anything because like i can i can kind of excuse the the nest home because it's one it's you know one of its primary purposes is to show security cam footage so i can kind of see that but the nest mini presumably doesn't even have a screen so i'm not yeah. so, sure I mean, I guess, what the connection is I, mean, I guess google's just gonna like rebrand all of all of the smart home stuff under nest yeah, but the, uh, I just feel like that's next, unnecessary, especially with pick. especially with like, frankly, Nest is pissing people off. Uh, mm -hmm. They've made some pretty questionable choices lately. I feel like hitching your cart to Nest right now is maybe not the best idea for all of Google smart home stuff. Well, and also if they were if they're going to make this change, like I, I'm on board with them picking a single brand and moving basically all of their hardware or at least all of their home oriented hardware under a single brand. That's fine. But I, I want to have some sort of confidence that they're going to stop here. Like, make the move, do it, commit to it, and stick with it. I feel like this branding choice may not last for even the year. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, well, I guess we'll see. Maybe in a year you will be using a, a Google Nest Pixel 5. Yeah, the, we'll be using the, the Pixel Mini. Um, no, but again, isn't this going to be like, are they renaming the Google home app to nest? Oh, do we God, know that I yet? Hope not. Oh, no. because if, if they do, that'll be what the, the fourth time they've rebranded that app. I believe <laughs> it's for, it was, it was, it was, it started as Chromecast. Chromecast. It was Chromecast and then it was cast and then it was home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and <laughs> it, that would, that would be worse though, because they'd be, if they did rename it to that, there's already a nest app. So they'd have two apps sharing this name and confusing people. Well, Google loves having two apps to do the same thing. Uh, so that we're going to talk about this that. in a minute, but it's already, <laughs> getting, it's already getting extra convoluted and confusing. Yeah. Um, okay, but we should talk about this. We should maybe talk about the speaker a little bit. Just like yeah. there were there were details that leaked. Um, so okay, so Nest Mini it will supposedly have a 3.5 millimeter jack, uh, a wall mount, and proximity awareness. Okay, I want to I want to point out that I wrote a post about things I want we want to see from the Google Home Mini Two, and it had both a wall mount and a headphone jack. Yes, I I, I suggested the wall mount because I yeah. want that. Well, I also I and, also want it. I mean, I have a I have my Home Mini wall mounted right now, so this this yeah. is definitely nice. Oh yeah, there are a bunch okay. of like third party things you can buy for the Home Mini now. Yeah, I believe actually uh, I don't think it made it into your post, but. Uh, I believe someone actually did push for proximity awareness as in in our chat room, and then I was the one who brought up the three point five millimeter jack. So yeah, we we pretty much hit all of these as yeah. things that we wanted. But um, for the for the proximity, this is something a little bit different, right? This is uh, supposedly when you come near the Nest Mini, it will do something. I, the current rumor right now says it will show you the current volume when you get close to it. Um, 
I guess what maybe we were thinking more along the lines of like what the Apple HomePod does, where like it senses the walls around it and tries to adjust the sound based on that. Or were you well, actually the, thinking? Oh, the see, I was, does that too. I was thinking of a uh, not not the same thing as the uh, what we're expecting from the Pixel Four with like gestures. Right. But I was I was expecting sort of a weaker version of that. Like if you're close by, it would just react a little differently in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm, I'm looking, I'm interested to see what they could do with that. That might end up being one of those things where it's almost useless when it comes out. But then with more software updates, they eventually get it to do something I really mean, cool. You know, what would be cool is if if it knew that you were speaking while you were very close to it, if it would actually lower the volume so it doesn't. Oh, that'd be you. so good. Yeah, Google, please take that idea. Oh my gosh. No, I've I've wanted that for so I don't understand why it doesn't do something like that. Where like I feel like that wouldn't be that difficult to program where I would say something and it responds at roughly the same volume level. Yes. That seems like something that wouldn't be that difficult to do. But yet I have to, you know, I have to be really careful if I ask my Google Home something at you know eleven PM or it could blast something in my face. Oh no, multiple times uh, before I even try anything else, I just tell Google <laughs> what volume it should be at. I've actually given it instructions to be at like a two because I'm thinking, I don't know where it was yeah. left at. So it, it just needs to be quiet. Yeah, it was, that was also really bad um, before they made the change where um, like turning off lights or starting audio, it wouldn't say anything back. Cause there were a couple of times where I'd be like in bed and I couldn't go to sleep. So I'd be like, uh, hey, can you turn uh, play the sound of rain? And I'd get like, okay, playing the sound of rain, the loudest possible <laughs> volume. Um, but yeah, so I, again, c complaints aside, I'm I'm glad they're putting a headphone jack on this because after the Chromecast audio was discontinued, there wasn't really a official way to get uh, to turn existing speakers into Chromecast targets, so. They're filling the hole that they uh, dug dug themselves <laughs> earlier this year, so good for that, I guess. Google, um, but yeah, even the the Amazon Echo has had a headphone jack for forever, I think, yeah, since the first model. So this is kind of one of those things that really should have been on the first model and wasn't for some reason. So really quickly, and I mean, I I agree. I think that's the intent of this, but uh, there is still um some uncertainty about whether or not that's input or output. And I can kind of see reasons for both, but I, I certainly still expect this to be a thing where you plug this into like better speakers, whatever speakers you want to use, and it'll it'll treat those as your output point. What would, what would it use? Why would there be input? If you wanted to come over and like plug it, let's say an iPod or a phone that actually has oh, a, okay. a audio yeah. jack out. Uh, yeah. yeah, you could use I it for mean... something like that. I feel I, like the speaker in a home mini is going to no, be No, that and that's that the way. point. That's why I don't think that's the reason either. But I'm just pointing out there is still, yeah. uh, there is technically uncertainty about this. I got I to gotta get my iPod integration in my Nest, Nest Mini. <laughs> does it have a Does it have a 30 pin connector? I was about to say, this, yeah. <laughs> if they just put a 30 pin connector on top, you just drop your, drop your, yeah. your Circa 2010 iPod just right on there. Cody, where's the FireWire port on this? <laughs> oh. Oh wow, that's a Going throwback. Dark. Yeah, deep cut. Uh, right. um, uh, also, thanks to Dayton Combs for subscribing for seven months. Yeah, yes, that's, that's fine. Still eight months, but you know, it's all right. <laughs> He's trying his best. He's stepping it up. I asked him to. Um, uh, okay. Also, we didn't point out that there might be new colors this time around, which. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope that the whatever speaker comes after the Google Home also has different colors. So I'm treating this as a good sign. Yeah, um, I'm not so, I'm not super excited about a new like mini size speaker. I want a replacement for the original Google Home. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely yeah. more interested in that. Yeah, because like the, the Home Max is a great speaker, but it's big and expensive. Um, yeah. you know, and the original Google Home is it's a pretty good speaker. But yeah. you know, it could, it could be better, especially now that there are things like the HomePod out there, which is you know smaller than the Home Max and a, you know a very good speaker. And yeah. I honestly do wonder if they're going to give up the uh, replaceable base thing entirely. Oh, well, they they I think they, they probably, probably gave that up already, though. Yeah, like, I, I don't I, think that that really that fits with it. Really fits with like the current aesthetic anyway. 
I think no. you can only buy like one of those on the Google store now. One of those replacements. They used to have like five and they're all gone now. Yeah, but on the plus side, you can go to Etsy and get like a billion of them. And yeah. half of those are Star Trek themed. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, maybe I'll yeah. order one of those. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ryan's like, I've got some shopping to do. Yeah, right. And there goes yeah. Ryan's income for the month. Uh, my, yeah. my wife is going to be really happy that the home speakers <laughs> around the house are going to have ridiculous coverings. It's going to be good for her, I think. All right, um, let's 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 uh, keyboards. change change gears ever so slightly and talk about uh, Nest accounts that you can finally migrate uh, to Google accounts, which I mean, good intention, kind of not great execution from Google. Um, so if if you might recall, before the most recent round of Nest pissing everybody off, um, there were some kind of embarrassing security snafus. Um, with, with Nest stuff, I guess, early this year and maybe last year, like if people's a accounts were being accessed through, through you know, because they were using passwords. And, and, you know, if somebody gets into your Nest account, like they kind of have a lot of access to your house. Like people were, were like their, their cameras were talking to them and like playing pranks on them. So that didn't look great for Google. Um, although that's, you know, not, you know, a, a problem unique to Nest. Um, it's just bad password management. But, um, so they said, you know, they they had a, a whole bunch of new things they were going to do with with Nest that they talked about at I/O, and one of them was to allow you to migrate your Nest account to a Google account because Google accounts, as we all know, have a lot more uh, security features, and Nest accounts, for whatever reason, were pretty bare bones. Um, like if you wanted to do two-factor auth on Nest, you had to use SMS, which I always thought was pretty dumb. I refused to use SMS as two-factor because phone numbers are not secure. It's, it's yeah. a bad idea. Um, it, was, it was kind of a, <laughs> that's also kind of strange coming from Google, who's been one of the big champions of, uh, you know, two-factor authentication keys and other types. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nest was just like way behind. And I guess instead of adding those features to Nest accounts, they thought it would just be easier to have people migrate to Google accounts. So you can do that now. It's in the, in the settings on the Nest app. And there's there should be an option on the website now. It was kind of broken when we posted, but hopefully it's fixed now. Um, so yeah, if you migrate your account from uh, from Nest to Google, uh, that's a one way process. You can't go back if you change your mind. And you might kind of wish that you could because there's some weird stuff going on. So it, let's assume that you're the owner of the Nest Home. Like you set everything up, and like you were the administrator on it. As soon as you migrate, everybody else on that account has to migrate to, and they're basically locked out until you do that. Like they can't use the app. They can't, like if they had a pin code to like unlock the nasty Gale door lock, that just doesn't work anymore. So they have to, they have to do the up, the update or well, the migration and then, you know, set it, set a new code and, you know, everybody has to be on the same page with that. Um, and during the migration, you merge your nest home with the Google home home. So like all of your stuff gets sort of smushed together awkwardly. And the Google Home app doesn't have a, like a user hierarchy. Everybody is on the same level. So if you invite somebody to join your, your, your Nest Home, like it's all managed in Google Home now, and they have the same level of access as you, they can remove you from your own <laughs> account. Okay, and it's just wow. so like if you've been like, you know, if, if, you know, you've got like teenagers or something and, you know, you've just been like inviting them to the Nest thing so that they can see all the cameras and, you know, have have a, a code for the door and everything. You might not want to do that because if you have a disagreement, they could lock you out of your your Google Home stuff and screw up all your carefully laid out smart home uh, routines yeah. and, and setups. And it's just or they'll some, um they'll rename your Google home speakers <laughs> or anything else you could do in the app. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and there's still like, there's like, there's still some user account stuff in the Nest app because you can have people who are just uh, granted access to your house through like with, with pin codes to use the locks or the security system. If you have one of those, um, that stuff is still separate from Google home and you manage that in the Nest app. Um, so those people only still just have like the access codes. They can't see like your cameras and whatnot. Um, the entire situation is just confusing. And I feel like Google did not plan ahead to make this process smooth. Um, there's still, you know, I, I still feel kind of confused about like where I should be going to do what. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, and the whole like the lack of having somebody who's just in charge of of the home devices is just silly. Yeah, and also someone um, pointed out in the comments of our article that the migration doesn't work at all if you have a G Suite account. <laughs> so oh, really? You can add that to the list of things that don't work on G Suite accounts. So, huh. So then, like, if you have a G Suite account and somebody else in your Nest home does the migration, then you couldn't migrate, and I guess you would just be locked out permanently? They would have to, like... Well, have they... To... Uh... Well, they, they G Suite accounts just got locked out of Google Assistant, I think. So uh, it wouldn't be that weird for yeah. them to suddenly remove features. Uh, yeah. And also, if you transition your account, then the um, if you use the if this, then that integration, uh, yeah. that will really stop working. Yeah, yeah the works with Nest stuff, um, they warned months ago this was going to go away. This, you know, migrating makes it go away immediately. Your, your, your if recipes or whatever they call them now, applets will yeah. uh, cease to function with Nest. <clears throat> yeah. So maybe don't do this right now. Just give it some time. Yeah. Google I, might I, I out. did it because I, I wanted to know how it would work so I could complain about it on the internet. Yeah. Uh, so I did that. I feel like Ryan took you're gonna I feel team. like you're gonna have to before long. I wouldn't be surprised if new features and devices that Google uh, releases down the line will require uh, you know, a migrated account. So yeah, well, it, yeah, it wouldn't really make any sense to, you know, keep putting resources into the app you're yeah. trying to get rid of. Well, I mean, hopefully, it's going to continue to be like a, a separate app just to to use your Nest devices. I mean, you 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 just have to like use the Home app to manage users, which is silly. Um, I just want them so to. So it's so it's it's kind of getting to the point of like all, every other smart home device where it's all connected yep. in the Google Home app, but then you have to have the separate yeah. apps. Yeah, I mean you can still. I mean, like with. you can. Um, I mean, I guess they could probably find a way to to merge all of the necessary features into the Home app. You can already watch like Nest camera feeds yeah. from the Home app, but the, but like <clears> if you want to do anything with settings for the cameras or any security stuff, you have to do that through the the Nest app. Yeah. Well, they they already have a a couple categories of devices that everything is configured from the home app. Like if you have a smart display, yeah. that's all done from the app. They could do something like that, or yeah. like the um like the the Bluetooth light bulbs. That's all, you know. The app, the Google Home app, is all you get to use with those. So, uh, um, maybe that'll come in a few months. Who knows. Or maybe they, maybe they'll just duplicate fun. functionality and keep both apps running for no particular reason. Yeah. Yeah, Scuttlefield put it pretty well in chat. Uh, the home app is basically your universal remote, and then uh, you use all the other apps for like specialized features. Yeah, that's mm. terrible. Yeah, that's, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, bad it, it's just everything is already bad about home media centers, but uh, yeah. you know, controlling your home and letting people in through your uh, door locks. It'll just be like um, half the other Google apps where if you try, if you want to see the specific settings for something, it'll just open up a Chrome tab with a URL in it. Uh, and, uh, there you go. I hate that so much. Okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's 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 uh, move on to the Play Store. There's there's blindingly bright Play Store news. Uh, the the new white version of the app. You know, Google's been doing all of the all of the new material theme revamps. And now it's the time for the Play Store to roll out to everybody. You might have seen this once or twice over the last couple of months. It, it pops up intermittently, but now it appears to be reaching everybody. Yes, and it doesn't really work functionally different. It's just everything's very white now with a little bit of drop shadow thrown in. Um, yeah. the The install page looks a little bit different. Like the um the open and cancel and install buttons are all full width. But yeah, it's it's just white now. <laughs> That's basically yeah, it. It's, um, and there's it no. Has... Okay. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say there's no um, dark mode yet. That's still being worked on. So for now, there's just very white Play Store, and there's no way to <laughs> make it less that way. Yeah, it um, it kind of has an unfinished vibe, kind of like the uh, the redesigned Keep app, where it just kind of like looks like things are floating out there. Right well, they got rid of all of the, like any sort of divider lines, anything that separates one thing from another, it's literally just objects that float in 
white space. Yeah. It is, it's weird. I, I feel like the way Google is going about this um, this redesign is kind of lame because I, I get that you know dark mode is going to be a thing, so you won't have to stare at all of the white apps. But that's only true if you're going to be on Android 10. I mean, most people aren't, and they're just stuck with these blindingly white apps. Yeah, I I have noticed that some of Google's apps um, are smart enough also to figure out when dark mode is enabled on Samsung's uh, One UI skin. Mm -hmm. Like I've noticed Chrome recognizes that, and I think Google Photos as well. But it's really hit or miss because it is assume extra code that has to be put in somewhere. Yeah. I mean, a so few of the apps also work. have the option to switch between dark and, and light. I mean, like yeah. Keep, I think, what you pick. But yeah. the Play Store does not. It just looks like this now. It's just very weird. Um, so don't update apps at, at night anymore. Yeah. Good times. All right. Well, so uh, we, we we trimmed our, our uh, topic list a little bit because of the technical issues we had starting. Uh, so that's that's the end of our our, uh, our list. Does anybody have anything else they want to uh, to chat about while we're here? No, no. not really. All right. No. So finishing pretty much on time, even with all of the all of the issues. So hopefully uh, we'll get that sorted out, so we won't be late next week. But uh, in the meantime, uh, anybody out there who has a comment, question, or concern, you can uh, you can let us know. Uh, podcast at AndroidPolice.com. Uh, and always do please go to uh, twitch.tv slash Android Police and subscribe. That helps us keep doing the show. And if you are an Amazon Prime member, it does not cost you anything extra. Uh, and if you subscribed a month or more ago, please go and renew that subscription for us. Uh, like I said, we get real money for that. Helps us keep doing this show. So... Uh, we promise fewer technical difficulties next time, so you'll actually feel good about subscribing. Don't let us. Oh, yeah, we can't promise anything. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm promising for you, Corbin. We promise we'll try. Okay, but Corbin promises worry. he'll try. All right, well, that's the show. We'll uh, we'll catch everybody next week. Good night, everybody. <laughs>